Welcome to a quick little review on chemical reactions, balancing reactions, interpreting reactions, and the mole. First of all, remember that our chemical reactions are always written reactants on the left, products on the right of the arrow. Several times we might see some additional symbols in the equation, solid, liquid, gas, aqueous, meaning something's dissolved in water. It, it is important for us to write those sometimes, not all the times. Um, if a chemical formula or a triangle is above an arrow, that means a catalyst was used or that heat was added to this reaction. And then, of course, we balance our chemical reactions so that we have the same number of atoms of each element on both sides, reactants and products, because of our law of conservation of mass. So here we see a couple reactions. Common um, solution to balancing some trickier reactions, although this first one isn't really tricky. It looks like aluminum, copper, aluminum and copper are balanced already, true. But when we have unequal numbers of atoms, here I see a 2 and a 3, the first thing my brain thinks of is the least common multiple. What's the least common multiple between 2 and 3? It would be 6. So if I make 6 chlorines on both sides, now I just have to fix my aluminum and my copper and this reaction is balanced. Pause the video for a second and see if you can balance the other ones. Hopefully this is what you got. The second one, the arsenic selenide, sorry, sulfide and oxygen looks like a combustion reaction. And here we also see another common theme. You might have tried to make three sulfurs come out but when you did that, the oxygens didn't balance. So we had to, what I call, double the recipe. And when you double the recipe, then you were able to correctly balance the equation. And then on the last one, just make sure you're careful with parentheses and what goes in. So you had to make sure that you had 12 hydrogens. 3 times 2 is 6 times 2. There's 12 hydrogens on each side. That was a little tricky there. Now when we have a balanced equation, you can interpret it on a couple different levels. On the particle, molecular atomic level, the molar level, and then the mass level. So here we have a very famous synthesis of ammonia reaction. On the molecular level, I can read this as saying a molecule, one molecule of nitrogen, reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to produce two molecules of ammonia. And then, of course, as we'll see here in a minute, the mole, our favorite unit in chemistry, I use the same coefficients, but I just talk about it on the molar level. One mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen react to make two moles of ammonia. On the mass level, I can prove the law of conservation of mass by using the molar masses from the periodic table and I get 28 grams of nitrogen plus 6 grams of hydrogen. So I have 34 grams of reactants and I get 34 grams of products. Okay, ammonia NH3 is 17. Again, where do these numbers come from? Those are our molar masses. All right, the molar mass, if you remember, is the mass of one mole of the substance. So for any element on the periodic table, it's the atomic mass expressed in grams per mole. And as it says there, it's numerically equal to the formula mass in AMUs. All right, now you want to get your best estimates. You don't have to be spot on with these molar masses as long as you're very close in the ballpark. If you're off by a tenth or two, it typically does not make a big impact on the AP test graders. But here we have water, H2O. Hydrogen on the periodic table is 1.0. Oxygen is 16.0. I like to go to the tenth. It just always works for me. So two of the hydrogens plus one of the oxygens, that's where we get 18 grams per mole. Sodium chloride. Sodium is 23. Chloride I like to call 35.5 and that's how we get the 58.5. Now again, watching your parentheses and whatnot, I've got two irons, three sulfurs, and 12 oxygens. So when I add all that up correctly, 
I get around 400 grams per mole. Again, iron I usually call 55.8. Sulfur I like to say is 32.1. And oxygen, oxygen again is 16. And so, of course, the molar mass and a balanced equation helps us do a lot of good stuff as far as stoichiometry is concerned. All right. And now, right now, though, we're just going to focus on a few molar conversions. How do we go back and forth between moles and mass and particles? Well, here's a lovely map to Moleville, as I like to call it, that I've given you. And you can certainly reference but again, the mole is the center of it all, Moleville. And it shows us that if you want to figure out what's going on between mass and moles, you have to use the periodic table. You have to use molar mass. So to get from moles to mass, I multiply by the periodic table. To get from mass to moles, I would divide by the molar mass on the periodic table. Particle-wise, we have our good friend Avogadro's number. We know that there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in one mole. If we have an element, it's that many atoms. If we have something like water, a molecular compound, it's that many molecules. If we're talking about ions, it's that many ions. If we have ionic compound, it's that many formula units. That many things in a mole. So to get from moles to particles, I multiply by Avogadro. From particles to moles, I divide. And then, yes, one mole of a gas at STP is 22.4 liters. And so we'll definitely be looking a little more closely at that when we get into our unit on gases. So here's just a couple molar conversion questions. How many moles of nitric acid are in a 28.5 gram sample. You can always set up dimensional analysis. If I have 28.5 grams of nitric acid, I want to change that grams into moles. And so using the molar mass, hydrogen, nitrogen, and three oxygens is 63.0 grams per mole. So I just enter that, 63.0 grams on the bottom per one mole. And so now that I know, I see, I multiply across the top, 28.5 times 1, and on the bottom, 1 times 63. And so I see that the mass of something divided by its molar mass will give me how many moles. And so I will get... 0.452 moles, a little less than half a mole. And that's the correct number of sig figs, because I had three sig figs in my starting measurement. How many grams of hydrogen peroxide in 0 0.909 moles? Okay, again, I can do dimensional analysis. If I have 0 0.909 moles of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, and I want to change those moles into grams, I can do so using the molar mass. Two H's, two oxygens, that would be 34 grams per mole. So again, this time I notice that the grams is on top, depending on how my dimensional analysis is working. And so yes, multiply across the top, 0 0.909 times 34, I get 30.9 grams. So again, dimensional analysis shows you what my little map showed you. Moles times molar mass will give you the mass of the substance. And then here we can involve our good friend, the particles. How many molecules in a 3.46 gram sample of hydrogen chloride, hydrochloric acid? So again, I can use dimensional analysis. I have 3.46 grams of my HCl. 
So I'd love to change my grams to molecules, but as I look at my map, there's something between grams and molecules. That's the mole. So I'm going to have to do two steps. I first need to divide by the molar mass, then I need to multiply by Avogadro. And that's what dimensional analysis would lead me through if you'd rather do it that way. So I got to change my grams to mole, and then my moles to molecules. HCl, hydrogen plus a chlorine, is 36.5. So one mole of HCl, 36.5 grams. And then, of course, one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. In our case here, molecules. When I multiply 3.46, times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and then divide by 36.5, my answer comes out to be 5.71 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. And yes, it's okay if you record your answer 5.71E22. That's acceptable. The cap Just make sure it's capitalized like it is on your graphing calculator display. All right, I hope that is helpful, and hopefully we'll do well on our quick check and our lab experience on the moles. Later.